Starting the news this morning, we see scores of them on the streets clutching at people or cars whizzing by in a bid to get some few coins to get by through the day. And I'm talking about young boys and girls, mostly Nigerians, some as young as three years old begging for arms on our streets. It's their daily occupation mainly, and for many, a chance to make some money to pay for their education as well, as Joy News' Zarina Mandi is finding out. Amina is 14. I met her on her usual routine around the Akrama roundabout as she grabbed pedestrians by the hand. She appeals to one of them for money for food, but her target refuses to budge and walks away, and Amina walks away gracefully. As much as they may seem like a nuisance, they have a story to tell. Even though Amina wouldn't speak on camera, she takes me home to meet her family at a slum not far from the Accra Mall. She tells me she's back to Accra for the holidays from Niger because she needs to work to earn some money for food. We meet her family who live in a wooden structure not far from the mall and she introduces me to her sister Fati. Fati has been in Ghana for four years. She explains to me what they do on a daily basis to eke out a living. In our country, we don't do any good living. We don't have water. Rain is not coming unless one years before it's come. We don't have any work to do in our country. And if he have a child, he is going to school. Every day he will be paying money for the school. And if the money finishes, he come back. Here is better. We are free here. But does she have any dreams? Any work, even a, a doctor or a lawyer like that. Most of these girls have their education cut short after junior high school. But for Amina, she's hoping that would not stop her from achieving her dreams. Zarina Mandi for Joy News. And Zarina will be bringing to us on the show a lot more updates on the... Well, Nigerians on our streets begging for arms. Uh, I guess their plights are something we all need to, to be talking about and also reach out to them. And a family of two people who were murdered at Miocho, a community close to Pram Pram or Dawenya in the Greater Accra region, have petitioned the acting IGP David Asantia Pietu over their killing, allegedly by some police officers. The family says 62 year old Francis Tetebotri and Mohammed Juwonu were shot and killed in December 2016 by allegedly five police officers from the Tema Police Command. According to them, the police officers complicit in the matter were yet to be arrested. The lawyer for the family has since been addressing a news conference at Mucho, from where Maxwell Agbagba reports. 29 December 2016 will forever be etched on the minds of the family of Francis Tetebuchi and Mohamed Jiwonu. The two were killed when officers of the Tema Regional Police Command responded to a distress call about some unscrupulous men who had entered the community building guns. The gunmen touched these two vehicles in the area. The officers who were called to respond to the violence ended up in a two-story building being constructed by Francis Tetabuki and his mason Mohamed Juwanu. The family of the two slain men believe the police officers killed the two. That is the exact spot where Francis Tetebotri was murdered in cold blood. Inside this building also, there's a splash of blood on some parts of the building, depicting how the mason who accompanied him that very day was also killed. Family members of the 62-year-old man are living in constant fear. They were police people, four, dressed with their helmets, with guns and stuff. So when they got to the place, actually I didn't know the old man was there. So by the way they were walking to the direction, I was watching them, watching them. So when they reached there, two passed the other side and then two passed the other side. And then the old man saw them and he came out. So when he came out, he was not holding anything. He came out and then one of the policemen asked him to lie down. And he did, he lied down. And then like he was facing them upwards and then he, the policeman asked him to face the floor. So he just faced the floor, no, and then the policeman started firing. Hmm. Why he did that thing? So there was a mason working on the building for our father. So he went there, like the mason heard the noise, so he 
try like asking questions. No, they fired the mason to in addition. So the old man, where the thing happened on the old man, I see, I saw everything. But the mason was inside. But I heard the noise. He was asking what's happening, what is going on, and then he was also fired. Meanwhile, addressing the news conference here in Accra, lawyer for the family, Gary Numakusafu, called on the office of the IGP to cause the arrest of the officers believed to have committed the act. That is Mr. Francis Tetebuki and Mohamed Jiwonu. Tetebuki was ordered by the police to turn himself upside down and he was shot in the head. The man was shot in the head. Several bullets from the autopsy and the coroner has confirmed that Mr. Bokri was shot deeply in the head. The brain and everything in the skull were all off for no apparent reason by the Tema police. These are the pictures of the policemen who did it. Now, one of the guys who was in the building with Mr. Bokri, that is Mohamed Juwonu, who is a Messi. When he came out to confront the police, he was shot dead immediately by these four police people. Now, from 29, now we are calling on the IGP, the acting IGP, Mr. Asante Apietu, that he should bring his men to order, or that we need immediate arrest of these policemen who, who, who were found to be part of this uh, act, and also call for the docket to have been properly investigated. Reporting for Joy News, Maxwell. And in Accra, the police command have launched a manhunt for the mastermind in Sunday's attack, which took place at Old Fadama, in which three people reportedly sustained machete and gunshot wounds. So far, 14 other suspects are currently in police custody, helping with investigations. Joy News Latif Idris has been to the troubled community and has come through with the following report. There seems to be no end in sight as far as clashes and reprisals and sometimes deadly clashes within the community of Old Fadama is concerned. Politically motivated clashes have gone on within this community for the past eight years and it appears we've not seen the last of such attacks yet. Just yesterday, Sunday, we had yet another attack within the community. And this time, it wasn't between the MPP and the NDC. It was within the ranks of the governing NPP. This attack has resulted in the destruction of properties. And also, three people, as we speak, are currently receiving treatment at the hospital. The police have been speaking to us on this subject. We were able to arrest some persons numbering about 14. For one of them, what we see was something we suspect was um, a gunshot wound. If at the end of the day we don't get material evidence enough for us to be able to prosecute, it becomes very difficult. So these guys are telling that they were rather under attack. So is the police interested? Would your men be interested in going to fish out those who attacked these individuals? Why not? That is what any, we have. If what they are saying is to be Believe it's anything to take yeah. to take home or to anything to yes. I don't want to say, but we have also been looking for one person since yesterday when we got to know that he was yes the brain behind it, and he is the one we are still looking for. Who is who is this individual? I I don't want to mention now. The more I give you that information, he also be going away far away from us. And the man at the center of the recent attack the new chief within this community, popularly known as Bullets, has been speaking to us on why the reprisal happened Sunday afternoon. They attacked us because of the rumor making round that we are going around the community confiscating properties of innocent people. That is totally false. We are peace-loving people and we are here to ensure that old Fadama is peaceful. <laughs> And this happened yesterday. Just look at what they did to my brother. Okay, so... So this young man you see in short suffered 
these wounds as a result of Sunday's attack or clashes here at Old Fadama. And it's showing us the wounds he suffered, the machete wounds he suffered is what we are seeing. And the leader of the community, that's the new chief, Bullets, has just been telling us exactly what happened yesterday. They were rather on the attack yesterday by a faction within the same new patriotic party. According to the chief, this has nothing to do with NDC and MPP. It's solely an MPP issue. Perhaps it's time the police and other security agencies adopt a different strategy in dealing with the criminality that has gone on within this community for the past eight years to bring lasting peace to the people of Old Fadama. Latif Idris, Joy News, Old Fadama here in Accra. And Arman Latif Idris on the show will be bringing to us the latest from that community. But 124 persons, including six women, have so far applied to the new patriotic party for the positions of municipal and district chief executives of various municipalities, metropolitan areas and districts in the Upper West Region, with Jirapa having the highest number of applicants. The number, according to the Upper West Regional Secretary of the MPP, Hafiz Bin Sali, will be whittled down to five persons for each of these districts, with special preference given to six females expected to appear before a vetting committee today. Mr. Sali said, apart from assessing their loyalty to the governing party, the committee will ultimately consider the competence of these applicants. We bring a report by Rafik Salam. The Upper West Regional Secretariat of the New Patriotic Party, MPP, directed the various 11 constituencies in the region to open nominations for persons who are aspiring to be municipal and district chief executives in the region. Nominations were therefore opened between January 27, 2017 and February 1, 2017, for the prospective candidates to apply. At the close of nominations, a total of 124 had penciled their names for the top jobs in the districts. We are very open, we are transparent. We want people who would be able to lead the, 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 the districts. So we are not going to compromise on that. It's the, what we are going to look out for is just competence and the ability to lead the people. We need development. We are in dire need of development. So we are not going to say that, put our cronies there. No. Mr. Binsali stated that the constituencies have further been directed to trim the number down to five for vetting at a regional level on Tuesday with special consideration given to women aspirants. Out of the 124 applicants, uh, six are uh, female, and while 118 are uh, uh, male. We, the, the, the female who were not shortlisted, there is a directive that we should give them the opportunity again at the regional level. So I have invited all the female applicants to attend the vet. We want to give them the opportunity because uh, once the numbers are not encouraging. He thanked President Nana Akufo Adu for the appointment of Ambrose Zere as Minister for Interior and Suleiman al as Upper West Minister designate with the hope that more sons and daughters from the Upper West region will still find favor with the new MPP government. We know that deputy ministerial positions have not been filled yet. We are hopeful that three or four persons from the Upper West region will be given the opportunity to serve in that capacity. We are also hopeful that uh, ambassadorial positions two or three other people from the Upper West Region will be given the, the position. We also pray that His Excellency will make some people from the Upper West Region chairman of some of the state, the boss, state a boss of some of the state agencies, as well as chief executive of these uh, state agencies. So we are very hopeful that many more people from the Upper West Region will be given the opportunity to serve in Nana Adudankwe Kufalu's government. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. 
In Accra, Parliament has set in motion a series of reforms to make it a much stronger institution. And the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, on Monday announced that this also includes the initiation and the enactment of laws by the House without the resort to the executive arm of government, as has always been the case. A lot of those laws, according to him, will seemingly focus on illegal mining and women's rights. Professor Michael Quay told journalists at a media briefing that he seeks to reform Parliament under his watch. If you look at our own constitution, you will see that nothing whatsoever demands parliament. We are not going to uh, make laws or introduce laws which are going to uh, involve an imposition of taxation or a charge on the public purse. The, the government holds the purse. And we're not going to make a law that will uh, instantly place a charge on them without their being involved. Because you don't know how much money the Minister of Finance is holding. But it's unfortunate that this had not been uh, well construed uh, in, the, in the past. And that's exactly what we are, we are inclined to, to doing at this particular time. If you look at our own uh, standing orders on the introduction uh, of, uh, of, of bills, it says that a bill shall come from a memorandum. And it shall be signed by a minister or a member. Who is the member? Member of parliament. So any member or group of members can really bring. And from both sides of the house, we are going to sit and consider some of these things. And in fact, with your assistance, we want to be seen to be working by our people whom we represent. It, it, it is a very, very important delegation. Look, there are a number of things about Galam say, for example, this parliament is not going to wait until a minister conceptualizes a law on Galam say before we will start talking about it. We are going to do it. If you consider women's rights, affirmative action, where today, Ghana, we are at the lowest ebb talking about Africa only. We are not going to, and I don't think our people expect us to wait for government. Because a law to enhance the, the, the rights, the respect, and everything, and dignity of women, is not going to be a charge on public funds. It's, it's something that is worth doing. If you look at uh, uh, laws on children, maltreatment, and other things, it's not a matter of going to impose any taxation on anybody. And we are going to do it. In fact, it's going to be a way of making honorable members of parliament think about all those things that touch, concern, and affect the populace, the people they represent. Well, that's it. The roundup of news we have for you this morning. But we have a lot more tidbits as we do a review of the newspapers and look at various stories on online platforms. Of course, notably, we have to start with our own, myjournal.com. Just before we do the review, you can still go there and check out the stories. But we'll be back with a review of the newspapers.